What's going down, everyone? And we're finally here for my AMG community and for new people that are coming across this channel. Welcome. We're going to be covering the brand new 21.9.1 from AMD's Radeon software. The Adrenaline software has come a long way. And for most community members that have been here since the first day that we've been doing a lot of comparisons from patch to patch which we're going to be lining up the 21.8.2 against this optional to see if it is well an improvement and we are looking towards a nicer performance portion and some vulcan add-ins so if you're newer to the network hit that subscription button in company with the notification bell and techies and techettes let's get excited drop a like and let's go ahead and scroll into the gaming news of drivers now, after we clear the patch notes, we'll be looking at some benchmarks in those comparisons. But for right now, one of the bigger things that comes down to the Vulcan support, which gives a lot of the individual grouping memories, and it goes towards the dot products on top of the shader. So we're looking at huge improvements, which is pretty cool. Uh, added support for games goes down to Deathloop, Call of Duty, Vanguard, Open Beta, and the AMD Smart Access memory, which is pretty freaking cool coming down to the rx 5000 series so now it should be able to run in tandem with that cpu a little bit better but if you look at some of the stuff where it has like uh, a package even when you look at the dot you're going to a 32 bits as well as we can see some stuff for the loads now past the vulcan support and what we see is some fixes is the artifacts inside of payday 2 they observe some gameplay in the amd 6800 xt uh, connecting to two screens, uh, different resolutions and refresh may flicker through the RX Vega series. And then you look at the 5500 XT. Higher expected memory clock speeds coming down for the display resolutions and the refresh for as far as 1080p 60 frames. Assassin's Creed's Odyssey and the driver timeout or black screen that may be experienced in some AMD graphics products like the RX 480. Uh, when the quick navigation uh, for as far as the swifty portion of where you can go towards known issues obs hits the list that some of the running backgrounds after the end of the recording uh, the, you have to close the software manually with a control delete on top of that situation you can see the driver timeout may experience while playing a game in the streaming simultaneously on some game graphics in that 500 series on top of the radeon software it may crash unresponsively in direct x11 for as far as PUBG and multiple screens in the connection inside of that extended mode uh, now horizon zero dawn may experience um, some lead driver timeouts uh, the gamer crash portion of lameness would come down to the 6700 xt for unfortunate hangups enhanced sync comes down to the black screen or having to hit the enable configuration now a workaround is to disable that sync as well as the radeon performance metrics and intermittent reporting higher than normal clock memory speeds but it happens there are some still some open issues for as far as the links a lot of stuff has not changed for known issues but let's go ahead and scroll into our tests but like a lot of people are wondering well is there a better horizon now you can see where it says the graphics driver is not approved on the right and that is our brand new 21.9.1 and on our left is going to be the 21.8.2 as you can see, for as far as the graphics scores, yes, they do increase a tiny bit. For the 4K department and having the newer Windows uh, support installed, you can see that at least it's trucking forward in performance with stability and adding some cool stuff, but not percentage breaking. Let's go ahead and take a look at 1080p and we can wrap up what the DirectX 12 will entail for these tests. Now this is where you see it very confusingly. And if you look at the scores and you're like, wait, the new one's not as good, but then you look at the left and you're like, oh, it's pretty cool. Maybe I should stick with the old driver. No, it actually does improve. If you look at the graphics score, it goes up a little more than just a few points. It actually goes up a lot, but with the CPU, it goes down a little bit for as far as the tandem is. So it seems like some of the work that they we may be seeing on the 21.9.2 may be them also fixing some of this smart access memory for other cards since they've introduced the newer access memory for the 5000 series. But moving on past that, what's DirectX 11 looking like, folks? 
As we come to the Firestrike Ultra 4K and DirectX 11, you can see that it comes down to a nice improvement. For as far as physics, it may not hit as hard as the combination score does creep up a little bit, but that graphics score, that is where the increasement comes down to it. Now the total scores finally match where the newer driver is kicking butt. So, so far this driver doesn't seem that bad. It's not a massive increasement in like the power level over 9,000, but it seems to offer some stability, some UI refreshes inside of Vulcan and some performance portions of just stability. But I'm leaning to the community. What are you experiencing out there? And if you are experiencing some problems, what is your setup? What's your GPU, CPU? And we can always see what the community has to show with that. But let's go ahead and take a look at 1080p. And the trend of performance increases again. As you can see, a little bit this time with graphics score, but you can see the tandem score of the physics goes down, but your CPU increases. So there's something in the smart access memory is working well. And it seems like they'll have to iron out very little things, except for inside the DirectX 12 department. So would the bread and butter. This is another one where it's just a wee bit confusing because the total score, you're like, well, you know, I'd just stick with the old driver. But if you look closely where the graphics score is, it beats it by roughly 200 points. On top of that is where we take a little bit more of a increasement is the physics. But where we take a step back is the combinated score of the uh, graphics with the CPU and GPU. And it doesn't pan out too well. So that's where we get the reduction in value. But it doesn't mean it's not still good. The ultimate end result is, should I install this driver? Yeah, it doesn't look that half bad. For the community members that are returning, I would love to hear what you have to show or what the experience is with the brand new 21.9.1 optional. Now, personally, myself, I am more excited to see Deathloop, which I have purchased, and uh, I'll be playing that later on. So stick tuned, everyone, for the brand new live reaction of that. And I will see you guys and gals in the near future. If you're new to the network, you can always like, share, and subscribe. Absolutely free. Helps me out as a creator. And if you do today, who knows? Maybe Lisa Sue will soon flood the market with GPUs that are so affordable. Everyone can be happy. It'd be awesome to just be able to find a wild GPU out there. And be able to buy it lower than MSRP. Those will be the awesome days. But stay tuned, everyone. I will see you guys and gals in the near future for more future content related into AMD. They've done a lot, honestly, from their FSR introduction, which I was running some comparisons, and it seems like they're doing back-to-back -back awesomeness when it comes down to just trying to really increase their product. So see you guys and gals in the near future. Stay safe, stay classy, and I will see you there.